Good morning. I'm Pam, and I'm glad to be back here with you again this week. We've been studied, we studied Psalms last week, and we're going to study Psalms again this week. So I hope that you've got your Bible with you and just go ahead and turn to Psalms. And I also hope you've got a pencil with you because I want you to uh, either underline or, or jot down someplace around Psalms, some of these Psalms that we're going to go through today and um, so that you can come back to them when you need to. And I'm going to go ahead and open this in a word of prayer this morning. And so just go ahead and, and we'll bow our heads and we'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, that, that we have this technology that we can come together this way. Father, I pray for um, everyone as we go through this difficult time. I pray for endurance for the ladies that are there, endurance in what they're trying to accomplish, and endurance in, in uh, dealing with uh, being isolated, Father. Father, I pray for the ladies' health that are there and the children's health, Father. I pray for their physical health as well as their mental health and just be with each one of them and help them to grow strong. Um, Father, I, I pray that you would use the, the uh, study that we have today to speak into someone's heart, speak the words that they need to hear today, Father, as we come and we, we uh, study the Bible together today. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, again, I said, you know, like we were talking about, we were studied in uh, Psalms last week, and we're going to start again at first, uh, the first chapter in the book of Psalms. And so you can just turn with me there now, but I'm going to review just a little bit. And if you remember right, the first lesson that we talked about was um, how uh, Jesus confronted or came in contact with a demon-possessed man. And we talked about two things in life, you know, how, how it was when Satan had complete control over him and then after he met Jesus. And so uh, there's quite a contrast there. How can you, you can't be more uh, in Satan's control than being possessed by a demon. So when this man was, was possessed by the demon, he was homeless. He had no voice. He was being self-destructive. He was naked and ashamed and he was isolated and he had no community. But then after he met Jesus, he was free of the demons. He was having a place to belong. He was sitting in a group of people at Jesus' feet. He was clothed in dignity and worth. He was in his right mind and he had a purpose in life. So we're going to kind of continue that theme of two choices, choosing Jesus or by default, choosing Satan or the world. Um, last week, we, we talked about how Psalms, when you look at it from beginning to end, you, someone organized it in the different Psalms in such a way as they pointed to Jesus and they pointed to God. And uh, that's, that's what we studied last week. This week, we're going to look at some different Psalms uh, that um, are helpful in our life. And uh, we're going to kind of continue with that theme of two choices. If you remember last week, we also looked at first Psalms. And in first Psalms, let me, I'm going to get, I'm going to try PowerPoint again. We'll see how this works. Let's see. I'm going to try to get it up here. Uh, let's So uh, we, we talked about um, the two paths in life. We talked about first Psalms and you had the path of following God and you had the path of following the wicked. So I'm going to read that to you here again. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers, not so the wicked. They are like the chaff that the wind blows away. 
Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. So again, you have those two paths. Um, you have the one path, you know, we, we, we talked about it being like the, uh, like the stained glass window above the sanctuary where, you know, you, you've got a stream, water, and you've got a tree with fruit in his, its season, and the tree has what it needs in life, and then you have the wicked and the things that they do in life. Eventually, they're just going to be like the chaff that the wind blows away. It'll come to nothing. And, um, and the next psalm we're going to look at here, and we're going to continue in this idea of a path in life, and uh, well, we're, we're going to look at a few a few verses here about paths. When you choose God, He will direct your path. Whenever I was in college, I had a college professor, and I don't even remember what the class is was, but he started out every class talking about how life was a journey, and in this journey of life, you will go down many paths. I don't remember much about the class, but I knew he started out that way so we're going to look at our life as a path or a journey and see what the bible has to say about that see what god has to say about that so psalms 27 11 it says teach me your way lord lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors psalms 119 105 says your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path psalms 142 and through he says, when my spirit grows faint within me, it is you who watches over my way. So as if you choose God, he will direct your paths. When you choose God, he will be your shepherd. Jesus declares himself as the good shepherd. And um, I'm going to read that. It, uh, John 10, 14 through 15 says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the, as the father knows me and I know the father and I would lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd. And so I'm going to read this. We're going to go back to Psalms now, Psalms 23, where, where it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So we look at this psalm, and we look at, at it as in the light of Jesus as being our shepherd, Jesus being our good shepherd. And so we see here in this psalm that we lack for nothing. He will provide all of our needs, not necessarily all of our wants, but our needs. He restores our soul. He brings a freshness back to us. He's continually restoring us. He guides us down the right path. He helps us to make the right decisions and lead us in the path that he has for us in life. He has a purpose for us. We talked about that the last couple of weeks. He goes with us through the dark times, even though I walk through the darkest valley. He is right there beside us. He goes with us. He blesses us. Even in the midst of our enemies, he blesses us. And uh, he blesses us so that our... His mercy and his love will be with us all the days of our life. And then after we die, we will dwell with him forever in heaven. So when you choose God and you choose him to be your shepherd, this is what you're choosing. Jesus, in the words of the Good Shepherd, he says, I've told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have troubles, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Overcome the world. 
in life, we're going to have problems. And Jesus tells us that we're going to have problems. Even when we choose Jesus as our path in life, we have problems. We live in a fallen world. The creation is fallen. And people have, God allows people to have free will. He allows them to make their own decisions. And not everyone is going to decide to treat us the way that God would have them to. People are selfish and sometimes they'll use us. And um, so we know that in this life that we are going to have troubles and we're going to have problems. But look at what is said here in Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works good for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. So even in this life, with all the troubles that we might face, good for us. Look here at Acts 2, 28. You have made known to me the paths of life, and you will fill me with joy in his presence. We can have joy in his presence. And uh, we're going to look at some of the Psalms, and that sometimes in the troubles of life, we, we need to feel close to God. We need to feel in his presence. And by reading through some of these Psalms, we can do that. And, and this is where I want you to, to have your pencil and paper, and I'll go through it again at the end. But I want you to, to either find it in your Bible and circle those Psalms and put a note out beside it, or put it at, at the beginning of the, the book of Psalms so that you'll know which Psalm to go to. And we're not gonna be able to cover everything in Psalms. Um, but we're going to start out and with looking at different places in Psalms you can go to in different situations in life. So the first Psalm we're going to look at is when evil seems to win. Sometimes we look at the world and it just doesn't seem fair. It seems like that the people are doing wrong, the people are following God, are winning in life. And then we have to remember, we have to remind ourselves they may appear to be winning in the present but that may not always be the case. We know that we ultimately win with God on our side. So I'm gonna read Psalms 37 for you, Psalms 37. Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways and they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. First thing we notice here is that the wicked are going to eventually wither and pass away, and their deeds will not stand. They will eventually be destroyed. But the righteous the righteous will receive, will receive, eventually receive the desires of their heart. They'll be vindicated and they will inherit the land. And then some other do's and don'ts here that he gives us. He says, do not be envious, uh, but take delight in the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord. Be still, wait patiently, and turn from anger and wrath. So, when, when evil seems to win, Psalms 37 is a psalm that you can go to. When we have enemies that seem to surround us, and, and we're going to look at two different psalms here. Uh, we have enemies that uh, seem to be within us, like our, our weaknesses, our addictions, our uh, frailties, our our failures that are within us. And, and, and then we have enemies from without. And uh, those are, you know, the people that surround us who want to bring us down, who don't care how we're doing. They, they want to uh, use us and they don't care what happens to us. And so I'm going to read these two Psalms. The first, read the whole 
uh, Psalm 18, but I'm not going to read the whole thing for lack of time. And besides all that, if I were here with you, I would be having you read some of these Psalms. But and uh, so you wouldn't just be listening to me. Everybody would be participating. But since we're doing it this way, I'm just going to read a portion of it. Psalms 18, 16 through 19. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. You know, we, we have a saying, you know, that we're just, we're just uh, treading water or, or uh, you know, we feel like we're just barely keeping our head above water. And it says here, he reached down from on high and took hold of me and drew, drew me out of deep waters. So, uh, and then also sometimes it feels like that our enemies, either our enemies from within or without, are just too strong for us to handle. And, and so that's a time when we can turn to God to support us and to give us the help that we need to overcome our enemies. I, I, something else that I see in these verses is that enemies do tend to strike when we're down, when we're, when we're tired, when we're emotionally overloaded, then when, when disasters strike, that's when we're our weakest and that's when we for sure need to turn and rely on God. Another, um, other song to go to when when you are uh, looking at your enemies in life is is uh, Psalms 59. Here in Psalms 59, it says, "Deliver me from my enemies, O God. Be my fortress against those who are attacking me. Deliver me from evildoers and save me from those who are after blood." See how they lie and wait for me. Fierce men conspire against me with no offense or sin of mine, Lord. I've done no wrong that they are ready to attack me. Arise to help me. Look on my plight. I will sing of your strength. In the morning, I will sing of your love. You are my fortress, my refuge in times of trouble. You are my strength. I sing praise to you, God, my fortress, my God on whom I rely. So here again, we're talking that this is mostly enemies from without. When we have those enemies, they seem to be out for us. We can go to God and when we can rely on God to help us find a way and we can rely on his strength. When you're afraid. In our life, there are oftentimes that fear just grips us. Either we're in physical danger or we're in fear of our future, or fear of making the right decisions, uh, fear of failure. There, there's oftentimes in our lives when, we, when fear just grips us. And so we can go to Psalms 46 for that. And I'm going to read 46, 1 through 3. Um, God is our refuge in strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the earthquake with their surging. Whenever I think of God as a refuge and a strength, I, I, I love the Lord of the Ring movies. You know, I'm a big Lord of the Ring fan. And so there is a stronghold that they go to that's got an outer wall, an inner wall, and then even more inner walls, and then tunnels and, and caves behind it. And in, in that, there, were, there was like 300 men that was able to defeat 10,000 because they were in a fortress and a refuge. So God is our refuge. And uh, we can turn to him in times of danger. In our lives, we have those times when we feel like like the mountains are quaking and the earth is just falling out from under us. And the times are so bad. We can look to God and know that he is our strength and our fortress during those really difficult earth-shaking times in our life. So looking back at this as our path in life and all of us at one time or another, at least I have, we've tried to take a shortcut 
And we know it's a shortcut, and we know that it's probably not a shortcut that God would have us take. Or we, we, we go and we go off on our own path. We forget, you know, to look to God as our uh, guide, as our shepherd. And we go off on our own path, and we forget, or we intentionally look away from uh, the things that he would have us do from, from, the, from the rights and wrongs that he gives us, and we fail. So uh, this is a psalm that you can go to when, when you failed and you want to come back to God, you want to get back on the right path. Look to Psalms 51, and I'm just going to read a portion of that for you. Uh, I'm going to read 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Cleanse me with high sip and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. This is a psalm that was written after David was confronted about his adultery and then the murder of her, her um, husband, his adultery with Bathsheba and the murder of her husband in order to cover it up because there was a child on the way. And then he, when he was confronted and he saw his sin, then he asked for God's forgiveness. And he didn't ask for justice here. He wanted God's, he wanted God's infinite compassion. And he wanted his, his sins to be blotted out in the way only God can do, in the mercy only that God can give. And uh, whenever we have sinned, we can go to the psalm. And as I've said, you know, we can pray these psalms to, to God. We can talk to God, read them out loud to ourselves and pray them aloud as a prayer to God, and um, he knows our hearts, and he knows our minds, and uh, you can, can pray this aloud if you want to, to uh, receive forgiveness and restore your relationship with him. Psalms 51. Sometimes in life, we're just tired. We're exhausted. Life can be tiring. Uh, there, you know, we can be emotionally tired, we can be physically tired. And what do we need at that time? We need a little bit of rest. Um, I'm gonna read Psalm, I, I went to this a lot of times when I was in college and I had studied and I had done my best and it was late at night and I felt like I still didn't know it, but I thought, well, you know, what's, what good is it gonna do for me to stay up any later at night? And I, I just prayed that God would help me to do my best and I would be able to go to sleep. So I'm going to read Psalms 127, 1 through 2 for you. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. I'm going to read a verse from Matthew 11, 29 through 30. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God knows that we need rest sometimes, and he understands. And he will give us the strength to do the things that are in his will. And those things that if we're trying to get to uh, uh, get too far ahead, you know, out of pride and, and working for that uh, extra dollar to have a luxury that we don't really need, then maybe, maybe we just need to rest. And uh, if God is in it, then he will help you and give the strength that you need. So we talk about rest here, but 
in the same psalm, in the same psalm, speaking of tired, he talks about children. And a lot of you are mothers, I know you are, and children can be exhausting. They can be exhausting physically, getting up at night with young children, getting up at night with sick children. They can be exhausting physically. They can be exhausting mentally. What do I do? How do I do the best for them? You know, I making huge decisions about school and where you live and all the things that go on in life. And then emotionally, your children can try your heart emotionally because they are their own people and, and they have their own minds and their own hearts. And if you're like me, if your child is not happy, you're not happy. I'm not happy unless my child is happy. And so they can take a toll on us emotionally. And sometimes we need to remember that they are a blessing. Um, I'm gonna read Psalm, the rest of Psalms 127 for you here. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in the court. What this is talking about here, not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in the court. It means whenever you get older, um, you have someone on your side. Your children will be by your side and on your side. You won't be alone. Um, again, though, talking about this as a path of life, your children are following that path with you. They are coming right along with you. And you can either show them the right path or you can be an example of the wrong path. Eventually, one day, they will choose their own path. But for now, while there are small children and while you have influence on them, they are watching your path and you are a great influence on them. So be careful the paths you take, your children are following. Um, sometimes we just need to remember how big God is, especially in our worries and our troubles, we need to remember how big he actually is. And there are two Psalms that I want to look at here, Psalms 8 and Psalms 19. And both of these talk about stars in them, in them. And when you go out at the sky at night and you look up at the stars, your mouth automatically falls open, partially because you're looking at the stars and partially just out of all of the stars. And now, uh, in this time, we, we have a better understanding of just how awe-inspiring the stars are. We, we know now exactly how far away they are and how far that that light has had to travel to reach your eyes. And uh, you know, we know about uh, the uh, sun and we know about the moon and we know about our solar system and, and the intricate workings of them. And having that knowledge just makes it more awe-inspiring. And for me, you know, I look at the stars and then I also, in my earlier years, worked in a hospital lab and I used the microscope all the time. And you look at a cell, a single cell, and you look at how intricate it is and how organized it is. So from the large universe and then down to the tiniest cell, you see God's magnificence. And so I'm going to read a couple of these Psalms for you to, and that show how great our God is. Psalms 8, I'm going to read 1 through 4. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider the heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? Again in Psalms 19, 1 through 4, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words, 
No sound is heard from them, yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. So we've talked about Jesus as our shepherd, leading us down the path of our lives. And we've looked at uh, uh, these, the different Psalms that we can go to in different circumstances along life's path. And so we're gonna look a little bit, uh, at just, just go over some of the benefits of choosing uh, Jesus as your shepherd and going down God's path as opposed to the path of the world. And some of those benefits include his giving you direction in life. And then uh, we, as we saw from the Psalms, he provides ultimate protection from the enemies and from your enemies and from the wicked. Um, he never leaves you alone. You're never alone. He is always walking with you. He gives you forgiveness when, when you sin, when you take a wrong path. He gives you forgiveness. He also gives you rest. And he, as he said, his, his burdens are easy and light. Um, and then again, we have eternal life with God. He promises eternal life with him in heaven with, with Jesus. So let's just review a few of those uh, Psalms. When evil seems to win, Psalms 37. When enemies surround you, Psalms 18 and 59. When you're afraid. Psalms 46. When you sin, Psalms 51. When you're tired, Psalms 27. When you're in awe of God, Psalms 8 and 19. And when you need comfort, Psalms 23. Talking about Jesus as our shepherd. I'm just going to leave this up here for you for a few minutes and uh, so that you can copy it down if you need to. Um, just know, I want you to know that God loves you. He wants to be your shepherd in life. He, he wants to, for, to be in your presence, just like uh, he wanted the demon-possessed man to be in his presence. He wants you there, and he wants to direct your, plot, your paths. And you can begin that by praying to him for, and asking forgiveness and um, asking him to be your Lord to be your shepherd for your life, just, just bowing your head and praying that. And you can begin your walk with him and you can begin going down that path of life with him along by your side. Um, to end today's lesson, instead of a prayer, I wanna offer a song of praise to God and um, I, I'm just going to read this to you, and then at the end of this, we'll be dismissed. Um, we're going to read the last psalm in the book of Psalms, Psalms 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpass, surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sound of trumpet. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, glad to be here with you today. I hope this gets you into a mood of worship. And um, I'm just going to leave you with uh, that psalm of praise and say again, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. <laughs>